<clears throat> For absolutely no reason that any of you need to worry about, I have some news. Did you know that it is actually a very, very, very possible for your villagers to die here in our Lakeburg Legacies adventures? True, we have already lost one villager to, I believe he, he choked on some chicken or something while he was at the, like, city fair, and it was very sad, uh, but, you know, he was also super old, so I didn't think a lot about it. But actually, did you know that you could have your villagers freeze to death if they don't have enough cloth? They could starve to death. They could die of malnutrition if they don't have enough of the different types of resources that they need. Yeah, I, I, um, I may not have been aware of that until perhaps I was just checking on what it would be like to have another legacy of Lakeburg and ended up almost killing everyone off. It was almost like a version of dotage in Lakeburg with a lot more friskiness, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so now that we have heard rumors of another village somewhere totally not where you guys need to worry about, um, <clears throat> dying of a lot of different things, including diseases they may or may not have picked up at the house of the Woo of the Who. Um, well, let's just say that all of our villagers have grown a little bit concerned, and so they turn to none other than poor Zero. Where are you, Zero? They turn to none other than poor Zero. Uh, the simple villager. The, the, the boy born into this village who's looking at everyone, throwing his arms up in the air like, what do you people want? What do you mean? Why me? <laughs> because the golden goose of prophecy uh, laid its egg upon his head. Yeah, they're looking to Zero and asking like, so what are we supposed to do? Like, how do we make sure everyone stays alive? Uh, there's another village down the way that ended up dying off, mostly from diseases picked up at the house of the Woo of the Who. Yeah, maybe we need to work on our church and get our health up a little bit. Just saying. <sighs> And, um, <clears throat> well, he is mostly baffled that they think that he has any concept of how this might be best done. However, I guess he just kind of glances into his kitchen and he's like, maybe our pantries need to continue to have the things we need, like the fish, the bread, the wood, the vegetables, and the clothes that Zero eats. Um, and I'm trying to remember, so when the citizenship levels go up, that's where they have, let's see, so our essential needs always need to be met. Clothing, veggies, wood, bread, and fish. And that's good to know because maybe you, I had a few people freeze to death in another village very quickly <laughs> when I didn't pay attention it was just like build my pretties build <laughs> I used up all the wood I'm building <laughs> oh dear and then everyone died <laughs> anyway let's not talk about that cursed place um, we're trying to, to step away from our dotage adventures in this anyway and instead uh, zero is going to kind of wave his arms at that and the villagers are going to quickly confer and see that perhaps we are abundant at the moment on new clothes clothes, but you see, we have a whole bunch of new villagers who have uh, been born, and we have a whole bunch of villagers who are thinking about having even more babies. In fact, that's one of the things that the villagers were going to discuss with none other than Zero uh, today, was going to be the fact that a lot of our villagers actually do want to have more children, but they don't have the room for it. And oh, what should they do? Like Zero, like right here in the Grimnail family. Their child M is already nine and Cass and Light have actually been desiring a new child for their exceptionally perfect 100% loving relationship uh, for quite some time. But what will they do? Whatever will they do when there's not enough room? Well, the goal is going to be to try to expand a little bit, but let's also focus on the fact that perhaps we have a few larger houses, like the Silkflea household, who happen to, um, to, to have this huge house where you could have two kids, but they're very old and they have no desire for children. So what should happen? Well, maybe, just maybe, there is, um, there's this idea that perhaps into the smaller of the houses, let's see where we are going here, obsessed, and then let's see, none. 
and then obsessed, and then I'm making sure that we pick, uh, okay, they have room. These guys do not. So maybe, you know, the Silkley family moves into this smaller house. And maybe over here to this, um, hey, hey, where'd it go? There it goes. Uh, to this larger house, we now have waiting for the stork. They're just like, boom, there's enough room for a kid. It's happening. <laughs> And that's something else that the villagers are beginning to understand. It's not like we're kicking all of the old folks out of their house so that we can go ahead and have room for, you know, the younger generation to have more children. But we're kind of doing that. So we're actually going to move some people around. But maybe, maybe we'll be nice about it and we'll just say that that's because uh, this family, this family, um, the older people want to be closer to the conveniences, you see. That's totally why we're doing it. Totally not uh, just kicking people out because I need room for people to have like a lot more babies. Insignificant wish for children between Deer and Mal. I think that's because of their age. Yeah, they love each other a lot, but like they're getting a little older. Oh, that's funny. Okay, wished for and then obsessed with Silene and Rain. See, this is this is nice. We'll look for like the people who are obsessed with having more children but don't have the space. And also, I just remembered, you know how we're always trying to figure out like, Zero, where the heck did you go? I can't find you. Um, let's see. This is a younger family too. So any of these guys don't want a baby right now because they have like a three-year-old, but they will want one. So let's see, these guys too. We're gonna move out all of the younger people. <laughs> yeah, Lynx and Mars are like, no, we also have a new baby. All right, and then everybody, baby wish none at the moment. Traits, oof. Oh my gosh, Meg, Art, I don't remember you guys having such a bad relationship. That might be my fault. I'm going to investigate that later. Um, let's see, desired between these two. Okay, maybe I just like bumped out most of the village from their houses. But that's because, you know, like, look, Jurassic and Sky, they they definitely could potentially make a little room for a young family who kind of want to expand. And I might end up just, aha, and see, like, the Bell family, Nalina and Penny, you know, again, sister and far away might want to have lots of children. Ember, Latte, they've got room over here for another, like, family to move in. Aha, and this is actually what I'm going to do. Also, because I have so much uh, like difficulty finding where the heck Zero has gone, watch this, watch this. And now, now, hey, wait a second. He was supposed to be at the start. Of <laughs> My idea was that by putting him in the first house, I thought yeah, I was gonna have him be like the first family. Dang it. Well, oh well, now I know where to at least find him there. All right, so we have room here for one of the younger couples too. And then we have room here because we need the wood for being able to build so many things, uh, including being able to go ahead. So wish to wait for stork. All right, and now we have used up all of the, the like closer places that have room. All right, back into all these random houses then people. Sorry I shuffled you around, uh, but you know, it was for the sake of like the stork being able to find places easier. <laughs> okay, almost there. All right, and, oh wait, it's occupied, there we go, ah, there. Okay, everyone's been shuffled around, but I think that that's actually going to uh, make things a little bit easier for us to have room at the inn for more children, so to speak. At least until we're able to get a lot more wood and uh, a lot more of the hearts so that we can go ahead and actually expand even more. Also, I could have sworn, all right, maybe if I, I really, Oh, I was hoping so badly that that would rearrange people so that I could actually find them easier. <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, okay, so any necessary needs? Little Thunderheart, what a fun name, needs to go ahead and be apprenticed out to someone. They could be an apprentice baker. Um, and let's see, they're actually really good at dexterity. So they could also, a healer. Look, kid, I know you have an aspiration for food, but you're young and malleable, and I might be able to go ahead and like get more healers. So you're gonna come over here. That could upgrade your knowledge, and we'll have to see how that works out for us. I'm still figuring out how to like upgrade the different skills and like change aspirations. So eventually I'll, I'll get there, but there we go. 
<sighs> All right, so that was, as you guys are often familiar with, a lot of talking, not a lot of action. However, that's because I wanted to make sure everybody stays alive. And uh, let's make sure we have, oh, I forgot we have like the big, the big, big bartering that we can do now, which is very useful for if we find ourselves in a big pickle. Oh, and I wish we had more jewelry because that would be so nice to be able to get like 700 gold just like that. But we're low on gold, we're low on hearts, and uh, we're low on babies. So, let's see. And also, so all of that said, <clears throat> without further ado, let's carry on. And kind of keep an eye on our villagers. Let's see. Mal and Ever are acquaintances. Thank goodness. They can have all of those little things happen. And oh my gosh, hang on. <laughs> Kitty, Lorley, touch cats. Oh, Jurassic! Jurassic has died from a boo-boo. Or so he thought after stubbing his toe on a misplaced toolbox. The supposedly minor bruise quickly flared into a moderate infection, followed by a fatal dose of incurable gangrene. No, Jurassic! Rest in peace, oh my gosh. Um, you have left behind a broken-hearted sky, but you know, I'm really glad that you were able to, to make it as long as you did, my friend. Um, darn. Uh, that, uh, okay, well, I guess that doesn't matter because it's just like a random event that can happen. And also, you can actually see when your villager might be about to die, I found out, by looking at the vitality that they have. And depending on their occupation, depending on like the relationships they have, other traits they have, that will go down over time. And when their vitality hits zero, they die. So we actually have a lot of very healthy old people, <laughs> which is kind of nice. But if we want to make sure that everyone continues to stay in good health, we need to make sure that they have all of their needs met, which include more clothes. And I think that means, yeah, clothes seem to be the thing we struggle with the most. I also have learned that it, this ambiance, the worker ambiance, has tremendous scaling big good effects. If you can really keep people super happy with the relationships at the workplace, oh my gosh, does it pay dividends down the road. Um, and also, if you can keep people happy, as we found with Zero, in their relationships, because we made sure that he had lots of friends, even though he was very depressive, it keeps the morale up and that keeps them alive longer and makes them pretty, pretty content in life. But since we struggle, okay, we're struggling with the leather. Is that, oh my gosh, it's cause Jurassic has gone and he was like one of our absolute best hunters. <laughs> okay, fisherman, priestess, miner. Um, if we had to pick anything be like uh, beetle, it would be coming over and leaving the mining because I think, oh, oh my gosh, and we have a thousand wood? Oh, our lumberjacks are just like absolutely chaotic at that. That's amazing. Let's see, what can we build? <gasps> we could build the castle now. Oh, that could be really fun, especially because I had a hugely cool idea about the castle. However, we did promise everyone an inn because the inn will actually allow people to have the apple cider that they want in order to really bond with their friends. And that's also something, you know, Zero is like, I don't know about this castle thing. Now, his new wife might have some opinions about a castle, but we'll talk about that in a little bit here. And instead, we shall go ahead and we shall focus on building the inn because clearly the inn is very important because we want to have uh, some great friendships going on here. Also, my goodness gracious, you can get a lot of prestige once you keep going down that route. Um, and also, I think we... Oh, you can get both the meat and the leather. Sorry, animals. Um, from the livestock farm. Ooh, the castle could lead to that and the fruit from the harvester's barn. Very useful. Um, but the inn, can we... Oh, we can build it. Yep. I love these builder tickets. Half the cost gone. Boom! Yes! Okay, that's gonna be delightful. And it produces uh, endless apple cider from, oh, the wheat. Ah, hmm. do I have a lot of wheat? Uh, we might wanna make sure that we can store more. Yeah, I probably wanna go ahead and expand that when we get the money, because now we're going to be pulling on the wheat from both the bakery and the inn. But who, ooh, Mel, hey! 
You know, Mel, we're actually doing really good with being able to have a lot of wood right now. So Mel, after such a long life, working the very hard job. In fact, let me check out how hard is your occupation. <gasps> the lumberjacks lose a lot of their vitality based off of, um, or their morale, pardon me, based off of their occupation. And they lose a little bit of their, their like, the vitality, aka their life. Their life is a teensy bit shorter from that occupation. Thankfully, it's not as short as I thought it would be. But, oh, Mel, look how cute you are as a new innkeeper. Oh, I love that. And Mel, let's see, you have one child with dragon. And you guys didn't want another kid, right? Yeah, yeah, you didn't. Ugh, I wish you did. But there we go. So that could be a great way to have the inn go. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, what does that do for us, making that apple cider? So there will be more than enough resources. Usable by the Thieves' Guild? Hold up. So Thieves' Guild, ah, because they use non-food resources and turn it into protection. Gotcha. Um, I kind of love that. That's also because the thieves kind of meet at, secretly at the inn and, like... We have a family who literally is focused on stealing gemstones in this village, which I love. But uh, let's actually upgrade the recycling down here so that she uses less wheat to make that apple cider. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go there. And then what else could we get? Oh, we could go ahead and trade some of that wheat, which I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to do anyway because it's abundant, for art. And we could go, oh my gosh, 36 tools. Are we abundant on clothes? We're gonna do it. And then tools to gold. We actually have, oh wow. Like we kind of came out ahead on that. Nice. Uh, all right. And that, that will let us pretty soon here, go ahead and upgrade the, the ability to stock the wheat. Boom. Now we can have 600. Ha! Ah! I'm actually figuring out how to do this a little bit. Uh, missing production resources. Oh, well, I thought I was figuring out how to do this. All right, and Sky, I think you're gonna stay single for a little bit. I'm sorry, you're old and sad. <laughs> oh, okay, so that was fruitful. Uh, not literally fruitful because we haven't built the um, the harvest area yet, but I'm really happy that we have the inn and I'm kind of curious how that affects relationships. Like when people are supposed to be best friends, um, madly in love. You need to have to keep the effects of like positive things going for madly in love, like art and jewelry. Oh, that's really neat. Like that. That. Oh no, you need less art. Or wait, no, you need more art and jewelry. I think. <laughs> but your morale goes way up. But you're distracted, so your production goes down a little bit. Boy, this is complex. Also, Evergreen, you're not very happy. But are you? How's the how's how's life going? You, you you good? Like I think you like your wife. Yeah, you guys are madly in love. Excellent relationship. Oh, you have a baby on the way. Uh, and then how could we make you happier? Your occupation as a seamster. But you like crafting. I guess maybe I need to go and make sure that like you know he actually enjoys his job. Uh, let's see. Ooh, ooh, I can just pop over to work from here. Um. We can actually upgrade it so that the working conditions are better here and morale will go up and life expectancy for our seamsters. So why not? We'll, we'll try that out. Probably should have spent that on... Well, actually, we do need a whole bunch of clothes. Oh dear, and we need a bunch of leather. Like, we need a lot more leather than clothes right now, actually. So... Can I upgrade? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, do I have good hunters that aren't doing anything else? Maybe? Um, I feel like upgrading the production would be the best use of time, but we'll have to see. Oh good, our llama's back. Oh my gosh, so we could trade some of our bread for some animals, tools for a lot of money. Oh boy, can I make that many tools though? I really want that. Uh, Bianca, I really want that. Okay, I hope I'm not gonna regret that. And then furniture for prestige. We're not really using the furniture, I think. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm probably gonna get in trouble doing all that. Oh no, Saffron and Rain now have the dejected relationship. Huh. 
I wonder why. That's interesting. <clears throat> but alright, so... Ah! Oh! Oh! Oh, okay! Well, I was gonna say something along the lines of... I know I chattered a lot this time, but I have started to really get the hang of things. And then this happened. to assassinate yet oh my gosh <laughs> um so when we come back definitely need to figure out how to make more of those weapons uh as quickly as possible oh my gosh and here be dragons there's just drama going everywhere all of a sudden <sighs> let's see once upon a time, there was a mighty dragon. Hidden in its cave in the middle of the forest, it slept atop a hoard of gold. So this has a little M and Cass and Light, who all happen to be, uh, I think, like, yeah, that's their, their little family. And actually, Light has a perfect match, like, family relationship with M, his daughter. That's amazing. And I think they're telling her a bedtime story, which is absolutely adorable. So, let's see. Since her parents told her this bedtime story every day before sleeping, Em dreams of meeting a real dragon. She even asked the blacksmith to craft her appropriate armor and the baker to give her provisions for the road. Her parents are a bit concerned about this obsession. Should they tell him the truth? So we could say dragons don't exist. Effects. So, oh, oh. The relationships will go from a loving and happy family to troubled family because she'll be so upset that they lied to her about the dragon, but she'll get the resilient trait and I, I can't tell the traits that- oh, there we go. And her parents will get the embarrassed trait. The resilient trait is, I don't think, worth that, but if we say nothing and let her believe in dragons, then she'll go from like having a happy family relationship with her mom to having a favorite relationship and having a happy family relationship with her dad to having a confidant. So he'll, she'll, she'll feel like she can have even more confidence in him. She'll become obstinate. And then apparently her parents will get the scared trait for a year. Because they're worried that like she might go run away to chase dragons. That's adorable. We're going we're gonna to say nothing. Cass decides not to say anything for now. One day, though, Im's bed was empty. She was found several hours later in the forest with a huge grin. There, by the water, was a baby dragon. Now the issue would be to convince her not to bring the snake home. <laughs> Aww, that's really cute. You know what? I have no regrets about that. I just don't. And also, we're going to come up over here and we're going to increase our weapons efficiency because apparently we're now dealing not only with baby dragons, but also assassins. Yeah, let's, let's try to get some guards next time, shall we? But all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this somewhat increasingly chaotic but very adorable adventure. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please, um, like, well, uh, pick a job, like jump in, let me know which one of the places you would like to work in, uh, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!